I'm coming from a country where we had like uh, lived decades of wars and conflicts, and it was just amazing to to go to the square and to find f people from everywhere. I never had the chance to talk with people from the south, from some of the areas of the country. So it was just amazing to, to stay in one tent with people from the left parties, uh, I, I mean liberals, uh, religious, non-religious, and to have all this diversity coming all together in one place. And perhaps uh, for even a much longer pl time period of time than Egypt, I mean we've been protesting now for 150 days. So it was, it is like more or less living uh, in a paradise in the middle of, of, of a hell where, where you experience conflicts and, and, and everything like that. So it's a, a paradise of diversity. I could just summarize it in that. We have um, internet penetration of less than 3% and even people who are using um, internet are not necessarily using social media. But we have millions of people going outside in, in like all, all the governorates, like in, in 17, 18, 20 cities at the same time. So I think the, um, this role of so social media in our case is, is not that uh, permanent. Um, so it's, it's more, I, 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 I don't try by that to underestimate the, 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 import, the, let's say, useful role the social media play. But I think in, in Yemen, it could have, it could have happened uh, without social media. In fact, I mean, I could argue that the first demonstration started in Yemen. We had like continuous demonstrations in, mm. uh, from 2007. Unfortunately, Yemen has been always invisible, so people do not, uh, did not recognize that. But it was going on, it was uh, continuous. Uh, people were able to, to keep the momentum from 2007, 2010, and then um, Tunisia and Egypt just gave uh, another inspiration for the majority of the people to go out. But, uh, you know, uh, it could have happened be without mm. social media. Uh, Ibrahim, will uh, Ali Abdullah Saleh return to Yemen? Hmm. Well, um, I mean, maybe, maybe not, but this is not the question anymore. Uh, I mean, we're discussing already what uh, about the era beyond uh, Ali Abdullah Saleh. Um, I think uh, even if he came, he won't. Uh, he's not in a. He's not fit enough to to lead the country, and the people will not accept him to to go back. So, I don't think this is a question anymore. And what is the most crucial question for Yemen? Well, I, I think for us as youth, um, we we are going from phase one where we were mobilizing for the next Friday into another phase where we are planning a vision for the coming 10 years. Uh, for us, the question is the question of economy, the question of uh, containing violence and trying to sustain uh, um, sustain um, uh, income from di uh, diversify, uh, uh, diversify sources and trying to invest in different uh, industries, and also try to dismantle this fear of security vacuum that is really uh, the most important uh, factor for the international society, although there are different other aspects which is important for us as Yemenis. Are you willing to take on a leadership role in your country? Well, I think everyone who went to the uh, streets was more or less taking a leadership role, and perhaps it's a different approach of leadership where you experience a community leadership, where you have everyone going on the streets despite the fact that you, for instance, do not have lunch or dinner or you are facing a lot of uh, economic pressure. This is kind of an, 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 a leadership that we really need it. It's not one person. And, and, and this is, we were really desperate for this kind of, of, of leadership. I, I don't think the problem in, in Yemen or in other Arab countries about finding the leadership, but finding the right processes that engage the entire society and, and uh, enable them to, uh, to reflect it uh, in, in their daily life. Mm -hmm. uh, the West and, and Western countries are still looking to Yemen as a security threat, no more, no less. While uh, if you need to tackle security problem, then you should, t you should take it in tandem with other aspects of the society. I think the security vacuum or the security problems in Yemen is a symptom of the economic situation, is, the, uh, is a symptom of the lack of legitimacy of the government. If you, if you go to the local communities where people do not think that the government have any legitimacy, then probably th um, you cannot act and, and, and react in, in those areas. And on the other side, when you speak about Yemen where you have a GDP per capita which is less than $1,000 a, um, a year, and uh, you have like over 40, 
40% of uh, unemployment rate and other aspects. This is really what is creating the security problems. So as I'm speaking now, we have like uh, drones and airstrikes, um, US and, and, and uh, airstrikes in Abyan, and it won't work. And it will never work yeah, unless you, you tackle the issue comprehensively. You try to see the whole image. You see why, what is the drivers of extremism? What is the drivers of the lack of security? Then you'll be able to solve it. You cannot just isolate it and try to um, to solve it alone. It's it's a package. Mm. Well, in Yemen, I think eventually a new Yemen will be born, but apparently it's a caesarean delivery, so it will take some time. <laughs> um, uh, but we understand that. We understand the difficulties and challenges, and, and, and perhaps no one understands that more than the youth, who until now spent more than 150 days on the streets with struggling and despite the economic uh, situation. We understand that, and we hope the international society as well understand it and um, approach us as humans, not as security threats.